Welcome everybody to episode 7 of the world famous Kick and Bass podcast. I am Byron. To my left is Johnny Phoenix and Big Joe. And uh, we've taken a couple days off. Actually more than a couple days, a couple weeks since uh, SHOT Show. Just doing a little recuperation and going all over the new products and stuff. And uh, trying to get some uh, contacts that we established at SHOT Show uh, into fruition for the podcast. And... Uh, First of all, we're going to start off with a, uh, a little video we did shoot at uh, SHOT Show with uh, 18-time Bianchi com- champion uh, Doug Koenig. Welcome back to just a few, oh, excuse me, we're not just a few only today, we are with the Kickle Bass uh, Podcast, Byron should be on camera, we're down one number, and I am here with one of the best shooters I've ever read about. Doug and I have gone back a long time, we've met each other five minutes ago. Thank you, Doug, for joining us. Uh, Doug is a member of the Speaker Shooting Team. He's won 18 Bianchi Cup Championships, three World Speed Shooting Championships. Championships. I'm going to let him do the rest. Yeah, I've won uh, 20 Masters International Championships, 20 Spots of Steam Challenge Championships, 8 High Roll Actors, Shots, High Roll, and 6 World Championships. So I've been doing it a long time. This is 33 years in the business. You've done a little bit of shooting, right? And uh, he's also the first guy to ever win a, a, a world championship with a red dot. I was the very first person to ever do it. So we're glad to have him on board. And what I want you to talk about, first off, is you have a gun that you personally designed a year. Yeah, I see a lot. Uh, we often hear a lot about celebrity shooters putting a name on a gun, like branding a gun. So tell us a little, about, uh, a little bit about your gun. So the 1911 um, that I worked with, basically the layout. The exact pistol that I shoot in competition. So, this is your personal gun for competition. It's in my gun, you'll see in my bag when I'm shooting Steel Challenge, anything uh, iron sights, Nike 11 single stack, this is the gun. Wow. It's the exact gun. So, it's got my fire controls, which I uh, manufacture and market, and the hammer and sear, the fully machined straight trigger that I've been using for almost 30 years now. In this pistol, we have a target crown, match chamber, one in 16 twist in the 9mm, uh, checkered front strap, checkered back strap, index for safety, adjustable target uh, sights with a fiber optic front. And it's just, it's just a great pistol. You know, Ruger's been building guns forever, right? And they have 1911s. But to me, the most important thing, you know, when you pick up a 1911, the first thing you're going to do is work the slide. And when they kind of rattle and they lose, it drives me nuts. So I kind of just, you know, ask them, hey, can we, you know, can we change our procedures? Can we do this, this, and this? Uh, to play them up and opening up the custom shop allowed us, you know, to hand out and slide the frame fit, hand fit the barrels. And you're getting truly a custom gun from Ruby. What's your gun? And you're it's getting, my gun. You're and getting the gun. gun, the guy that's won like up to the whole championship. Right. And it's the one that's in your shooting area. Absolutely. And that's that's the deal. You know, I didn't want to just, first off, put my name on something that I didn't believe in. But if it's not something that I shoot, I really look good at it. Like, you know, people want to buy, they want to, you know, they want to see what I'm using, and then they want to be able to buy that. So just really good target this for competition? Well, I mean, it's, it's set up. As a you know, for a competition, for anybody that likes nice 1911s right. is going to love this pistol. And this is you know, the first one we did last year was an iron year. And this year, mid year, we introduced the same exact 945 ACP. And then who knows what the future of our military is. Who knows? You know, we're always, we're always looking for renovation and new guns and things like that. But, you know, Johnny. Yes, sir. Doug Koenig, you, uh, what was your experience with Doug him? Doug Koenig is, you know, when you think about championship athletes, and uh, I, I told him this, I don't think I've made like 18 sets of scrambled eggs right in my entire <laughs> life. But this guy goes out. He's got 18 championships on the Bianchi World Cup. He's got three steel shot challenges. And, you know, it, uh, just to be honest, you know, a lot of gun personalities in the gun business, you know, they're kind of dicks. And Doug was an actually a, a, a completely down to earth guy. Yeah, he seemed you know? like he was a real cool guy. Uh, I mean, it's the last day's shot show. You know, it's probably for him. 
you know, 24 seven with people asking them questions and asking for autographs and all that stuff. So I kind of expected him to be like a little irritated maybe. So just kind of watch my foot, I step around him. But he made a really, really a, a pleasant interview. Went over a lot of good stuff about what he's doing for the gun community, what he's doing for the shooting sport, what his plans are. Been a great, great guy. You know, that's all I can say. Joe? I've seen a lot of his, like, teaching videos, and I, I feel like there's not a lot of people out there doing teaching videos, like how he's he has got his own whole set on YouTube on just teaching people, you know, fundamentals, you know? Right. Which is awesome. Yeah, I've seen a couple of his, uh, <coughs> his Steel Challenge videos on, yeah. on yeah, the uh, guy's target awesome. pattern selection and stuff like that. They're yeah. pretty cool. You should get him on your team. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give him a call. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <We're> recruiting. <laughs> All right, and if you heard the voice that uh, just uh, interjected there, that is the Vice President of Sales for Shadow Systems, Chad Jewett. Welcome What's up, to the guys? Show. Welcome Thanks for having me. Thanks doing? for coming, Thank man. You. Thanks for coming. Well, a couple months ago, mm. uh, we had the opportunity to get our hands on one of the uh, MR918s. Uh, you guys released that right about a year ago from mm -hmm. right now, right? Yep, we introduced uh, the 918 officially into the market at SHOT Show what, 2019, so yeah. Yep. Great. So. Well, we're going to uh, show uh, Johnny and Joe's video of the uh, 918. And welcome back to Just a Few Reviews. I am Johnny Phoenix. With me, as always, my partner, Joe the Man. Oh, Big Joe, right? Big Joe, right? Big Joe. And with us today, we have, we're have we very honored to have a good guest with us today. His name is Brad Lyons. Uh, Brad introduced the MR918 by Shadow Systems. This is a uh, Glock 19 frame or compatible with a Glock 19 frame. Um, that what they're doing is they have a flat face trigger. It's a four to four and a half pound trigger. Uh, it's a one in 10 twist barrel, and um, it's all made in, here in the US. There's two different models. We've got the Elite Cut, which has the Elite, which has a window cut and top aggressive one way serrations. And then here's the Combat. It's the same gun. It doesn't have as much as deep of the serrations on the front, and it does not have the window cut. Both of these pistols come, you can get it with or without a optics plate, which is based off an RMR. So that is the shadow. Got a baby. Uh, first things we shot today were the Shadow Systems, uh, 9 millimeter pistols. They were very similar to the Glock platform. Uh, they both shot great, both smooth. They're a lot smoother than uh, shooting your standard Glock 19. Um, the grip texture felt awesome. The undercuts on it made your hand fit uh, perfect on there. The sights were great on there too. The serrations on the slide. Um, everything about that gun is, it was smooth. It, it shot great. Uh, highly recommend it. I mean for the price point you really can't it's a you know It looks like a Gucci Glock, but you're not paying Gucci Glock price You're 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 way under a grand on those pistols. I think they're closer to like Seven eight hundred dollar range So guys when you were uh, out there at the range with the 918, what'd you think? I, I love the gun. I love you know the, the great ergonomics of the gun. It, it felt great. It handled great um, it, was a, it was a good shooting pistol um, I had nothing but good things to say about the gun, and I'm not disappointed at all on us on all aspects. It was great. That's awesome. Thank it's you. It's a very forgiving gun. <laughs> you know, a lot of our viewers know Joe and our enthusiasts. You know, we yeah. don't shoot thousands of rounds a week. We don't train. We don't compete. We're not operators or anything. We're just normal guys that like guns. You know, 
You do you have the beard. I know. Yeah. Just, uh, he, has, he has the operator beard. When I hear operator, I start I start yeah. petting it. You know? <laughs> wow. <laughs> but we've seen him shoot, so we know better. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, at the end of the day, you know. Wha- That's why I was watching Doug's videos, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I wish you'd have watched them before we shot the guy. Yeah, anyway. exactly right. No, it's, uh, if, y- if you're, and here's the thing about the gun. Um, we have a lot of people that watch our show that are super into guns. They're, they're gun guys, gun gals. They know everything. To, you know, they probably compete. Uh, a lot of people in law enforcement, that kind of thing. Yeah. And they know what a shadow system product is. Hmm. But for our less knowledgeable viewers, you want to just maybe go over uh, a brief you know, history of what the company is about and why you chose what seems to be like a Glock pattern yeah. to, to develop your, Absolutely. your gun Absolutely. Yeah, so we began life back in 2016 doing like aftermarket upgrade parts for mm-hmm. Glock style Glock pistols primarily. We did right. some others, Smith and Wesson stuff, but primary Glocks, right? Because people, obviously, the best-selling gun handguns out there, and people were always wanting to customize them and do things, and so we we're like, hey, let's get into that space. So that's where we started. We then morphed into doing custom, complete custom Glocks, where we would start with a strip Glock frame, and then we built everything else. And, and through doing that, we realized, man, there's a big kind of void in the market of um, between the what's kind of out there in production right. and custom. <clears throat> and we saw it, man, we saw this huge, huge void out there that we thought people in the production world need better guns out there. You know, uh, there's a lot of just kind of, you know, we would talk about like, there's a lot of, yeah, it's good enough, right? That's kind right. of this mentality. And so... Our, our backgrounds, the those of us that have kind of helped design this and lead the company, um, we're all either prior military, law enforcement, competitive shooters, or a combination mm-hmm. thereof. And we, we really like to clarify, like, it doesn't make us special or unique or anything. Right. It just says we've kind of looked at some of the guns in a different, you know, uh, different mindset. Like, right. we, we truly believe that in every single case there's a chance this gun any of these guns could be used to defend your life whether it's on a you know law enforcement officer uh you know personal carry a soccer mom whoever it is we we want this gun to work for them and so we took features and stuff that we saw missing or things that we wanted in maybe we couldn't have in law enforcement we couldn't have in military um things that we maybe did have in the competitive world and how can we fix that together and um and and that really kind of spawned the creation of the 918 because we saw that void we wanted to deliver a better um option out there for people in that market so it's been uh, a whirlwind of a year we're incredibly excited we've been uh, incredibly blessed and so cool um, we want to keep expanding on that so so. 918 was your your entry into the the actual from the ground up yeah shadow system that was it that was the first true 100% 100% Shadow right. Systems production and what gun. Did, I have my own opinion mm-hmm. of what I think you might have been thinking when you started out producing the gun. Mm-hmm. What What do you think was the biggest improvement that you could have made over, like it's a Glock 19 size. Yeah, Glock rifle. 19 size. Mm-hmm. Well, ergonomics were a big thing. Boom. Ergonomics yeah. were absolutely like biggest factor in us, you know, developing the 918 that's what everybody wants to do is yeah like undercut <laughs> yeah yeah and so when we did custom glocks and stuff right. we would undercut them we'd, we'd you know reduce the back strap and right. do different things to try to make it you know it's a f- such a phenomenal operating system right and a great great gun but you know what people want they want a little bit more ergonomics and we thought man if we just pay a little bit of attention and try to take what we're doing or what we're hearing we think people are going to want it even things like down to we do an interchangeable backstrap system right. that everybody does a backstrap system. We just wanted to think about it differently, right. not just because you know you look at it, it's like it's not so much the circumference or the width of the grip that matters. It's really in our mind what matters is how the gun points. Right. Because a guy that's a nineteen eleven shooter points and presents the gun very differently than somebody that's been a lifelong Glock shooter. And so we're like, let's develop a backstrap system that can mimic these things. And so the ergonomics were hands down number one driving feature in, that's in fixing a, that. That's exactly what yeah. I was, you know, yeah, when we were shooting, that's the first is, thing yeah. I said, you know, when Brad brought it out. And re- I didn't really have a whole, I've heard of shadow systems. Right. I've never really delved into that yeah. ar- arena because I'll tell you the truth. To me, when you get a, we said this about another uh, gun company that's the same thing, Gucci Glocks, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I was never into Gucci Glocks because 
I thought they were more about appearance than anything else. And yeah. the performance that was being squeezed out of the gun mm-hmm. wasn't enough for me to say, wow, you know what? I really right. need to get this gun for triple the amount of Glock. Right. And one of the things that's impressive about Shadow Systems, you guys kept the cost under control. And the improvements you made to the gun, for me, as a, okay, I'm a novice shooter. Right. And I think where it appeals to the novice shooters, we're not gonna, we're not gonna be able to squeeze the performance out of the gun, yeah. you know, down to MOA, accuracy, right. or whatever the case right. may be. It's more about the comfort and the feel. Yeah. And for me, the one thing that struck me when I shot the gun is I looked at it and I thought, wow, it's just a Glock with another barrel in it. Right. And when I held it and shot it, like you said, the, the ergonomics translates to a whole different shooting experience. It's, it felt like a lot like the grip angle of a 1911. Yeah. And that's what I commented on. And I, <coughs> excuse me, and I think uh, one thing that, that's really impressed me the most is even with myself, have, I have access to wholesale pricing, mm-hmm. you know. Must be nice. There's, <laughs> <laughs> there's no way you could build, you could take a Glock 19 mm-hmm. And make a comparable product for what this gun sells for, not even at wholesale price. Not even no. close either. Yeah, and you'll notice that, that the companies that are doing well and are innovative have that quality, just like yeah. we talked about with POF. Mm-hmm. You can't mm-hmm. make a revolution. You know, you can't right. build it from home. Right. So as much as I may be a, a handy guy, you know, there's so there's only so much you can do to a Glock. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, the normal guy you right. know, that just yeah. has basic knowledge of the gun. Absolutely. Function. But uh, like I said, it. it the, the, the mo- if somebody were to ask me, okay, explain the uh, the shadow system gun to me real quick in a short sentence. Like, it's a smooth shooting gun, it's flat shooting, and it feels good in the hand. Yeah. And you can't really, for the extra two, three hundred bucks, mm-hmm. add it on to a base Glock, right. I could live with that. Yeah. You know? And it actually translates to something that's useful. Mm-hmm. And it's just not about the blingy look. Yeah. That was a big thing, too. Like, you know, I've bought way too many guns well no that's not true i've never bought way too many but <laughs> bought plenty of guns in my life that i immediately buy it and i turn around and okay well I, it doesn't it, i want these plastic sights gone i want this you know and so we're like it's kind of silly that you have to buy you buy a brand new gun and immediately have to go put this money right. into to get it up to the level that you know i'm going to carry it at or whatever right. and stuff so we're like let's just have build that all into that you know and the fact that we can we manufacture and make this and we control our supply chain and we do all that that allows us to produce it you know right. at a much lower cost than as you mentioned Byron, like going and buying a stock production gun and and adding all these things on night sights and a flat face trigger and a match grade barrel and you know mag wells and all that stuff like it's all there it's but ready even, to go even the machine work on the gun yeah. I mean, the machine you on know the, slide the, is the slide serrations yeah. and that was mm-hmm. a big like we we've we've gone through multiple iterations and testing developing like slides rations because typically you know it's that whole good enough thing we say like right. typically you see straight vertical serrations that take no time to machine you know we see how long it take we know how long it takes us to machine these we also know how long it takes to just go zip, 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 you know just a right. couple little things like but you know directional serrations okay until you feel it and experience it does it make right. sense well it right. does make sense it's smooth no friction coming out of a holster. Then when you go to manipulate it, it works with you. And like mm-hmm. that, it just it looks good, but it has a functional you, benefit behind you it. You don't have to be a competition shooter to appreciate what it does. Yeah. You have to actually shoot it to understand what yeah, we're talking absolutely. about. Absolutely. You, know, you take a stock Glock and you try to rack it from the front. If you're used to racking it yeah. from the front, and you know prior to the Gen Fives, they didn't have the serrations and it was slippery. Yeah. You know. And then the serrations, depending on how you like, how mm-hmm. aggressive you want serrations are, you know, they just there's always something you can goof with. But to come out with a base package for somebody to be able to pick up without having to do all the work, yeah, get the performance out of it at a reasonable cost. And you know, these guys bust my chops all the time because Byron, you know, he he's not into cheap guns, right? I always talk, hey, take a look at this value package. Oh yeah. man, we don't want to be known for that, <laughs> right? And then Joe's like, Mister. You know, he, he, he's into guns, and he likes the newest, the latest, and greatest. Mm-hmm. He's got himself a Hellcat. You know, it's the latest, and greatest yeah, thing. Yeah, absolutely. So he's not into, for me, um, as I get older, I'm into the more of the, what am I getting for my money? Mm-hmm. I'm a value-based yeah. guy, right? We use that a lot. Like, we want to be the highest value gun out there on the That's market. That's probably why and I enjoy the gun so yeah, much. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's priced correctly. Mm-hmm. You know, there's guns similar to what you're making that are going for 1500 to 2000 bucks. Yeah. And that's a little ludicrous for me. Yeah. I think you get to a point of diminishing returns when that happens. 
Um, so 918 was the beginning product, and it's I loved it. Yeah. Until I didn't get a chance to shoot the 920 yet. But yeah. I saw a shot. The 920 right? is here now. It starts shipping next week. So, right, so tell us about it. Yeah. Man. Go ahead. And so that's that's the fun thing too about being a smaller company, right? <clears throat> like, um, there's kind of been this un unwritten rule, like in the gun industry, that like. We don't innovate for eight to ten years, and then we have a new generation right. or a version two or whatever it is. And we're like, man, we've heard feedback. Some of it was actually valuable, and like we, oh yeah, that's it. we maybe we overlooked that, or it could be improved upon. And you know, I think that's a big thing. Like we try not to have any ego attached to this. It's all about like, can you really deliver a better? And if if we can improve in a year. And like yeah, we we improved, and so you know just little things, and so this is this is a 920 we have here. So we had we had a bit of a beaver tail on the 918, but we found we thought it was enough. But there's some people with just gorilla monster hands that were still getting slide bite, right? Right. So we're like, hey, let's extend the beaver tail just a little bit. Let's curve it up a little bit. Let's design it kind of intelligently. So like. As you're grabbing, especially like inside the waistband, it's gonna kind of really drive your hand up into the front and just protect the hand hand a little bit more. You kind of see like CZ sometimes curves it up, right. or even some of the uh, some beaver tails we would find would actually tend to force the gun to point a little higher. Right. Um, maybe in some of your 1911s and stuff. So we're like, let's let's really try to intelligently design that. Little things when you look at it, but a lot of thought went into it. Right. Um, we've added these kind of recoil control ledges here on the uh, on the side. We already had a texture, like index texture mm -hmm. pad there before, but we're like, hey, let's make it like a recoil, like your spot for your support side thumb to be able to go so that you can really get in there, grip and rip, and just, it's all about recoil management, right? So right. ergonomics, better recoil management, faster shots. So those are a couple little things we made change on the, the 920, um, and we thought they were, they were actually improvements. We also, the trigger guard in the 918 had a little nub right mm -hmm. here. We found some holster compatibility issues there, so we're like, all right, we can keep the double undercut, get rid of the nub, and just improve right. it. Um, on the slide, we kind of rounded out the back a little bit, changed the the back of the design so it's not a flat surface there. So kind of helps in a couple ways. Again, performance, like right? drawing, it's less that flat <coughs> surface, can't catch on a shirt. Can't, can't can't catch on a love handle. We actually had a guy like that's why we talked about it because we had somebody contact us like, hey, yeah, I constantly catch the 918 on my love handle. We're like, I don't know if that's a gun issue or you, but no. So we actually right. started looking at things like, man, if you could change that angle a little bit, you know, sometimes you see in an M and P or some, right. see, you see some different angles. We're like, let's change that. You kind of beveled it up. Yep, beveled it up a little bit. Um, <laughs> we thinned out the front just a tiny bit. You know, uh, I don't mean to interrupt, yeah. but when I saw it at the shot show, I thought that was the greatest thing ever. Because it's just a small improvement. The, the, the rear or the, the, front? the front? Front, yeah. That helps a lot. It does. Like, because um, especially you so if you're much running more, an optic, yeah. I, I do a lot of press it's checks up here at the front. A lot of guys do. And so it gives you that, like, real definitive. It gives point you a ledge. And a ledge to grab yeah. and, and do that at. So. Um, but then the big change came. We had been working um, with the 918. The optics cut were for the Trigicon RMR footprint. Right. Um, that's a whole nother show. I wish every optic company would standardize on one footprint, but that you know, it's not going to happen. So, so we did it for that Trigicon. Holosun's really smart. They made it fit that same footprint. And but we had a lot of people asking us, "Hey, I run a Vortex Viper, or I'm running a Delta Point Pro, or whatever it is." And so we were we were working with some plate systems and stuff for the 918, and we we really don't like plates, right? Because you start raising mm -hmm. your sight picture, you get tolerance stacking. Typically, you would see like these little tiny screws that maybe get one or two threads of engagement with the optic, and we're like, we just don't like them. We don't feel like you want to be able to rack these, you know, right. rack them off. Sorry, I'm, I'm not supposed to hit the table because it's loud. But, <laughs> you know, rack these off the optic or whatever, and we just didn't feel great about the, you know, how strong those were when you're using plates. So we're like, well, let's let's look at redesigning the optic system here. And so the nine, this was, you know, if there's one single feature that we could say is like what we really wanted to accomplish in the 920 was the optics cut. So we wanted a multi-optic um, cut that would allow multiple optics to direct mount to the slide with no plate system. And wow. so we have a patent pending design on this. We're pretty excited mm -hmm. about it. So 
you know, we've got a, a Hollow Sun, a, a Vortex Viper, a Delta Point Pro, an RMR. We've got multiple optics, and there's there's a lot, you know, that right. that fit into those kind of categories, and there's more that all direct mount to the slide. So with no plates, we think that's a big deal because one, you lower your sight, you keep very consistent in your sight picture. You still get a lower third co-witness with the sights that are on it. You get um, literally you have like three quarters of inch long screws that go into here, almost all the way down to the rails. Uh, holding the optic on so you have a ton of engagement right. so the strength issue is there um, we also found a lot of wandering on the plates uh, systems mm -hmm. left and right wandering of the optics yeah. they shift yeah. right and so mm -hmm. like we we just wanted to you know to redesign that so we we redesigned kind of the extractor to pressure plunger assembly change a few things um, you know just that's kind of one of the fun things of being a smaller company. You can right. plink, play and plink, and literally, you it starts off like as an idea on a napkin, and wondering, hey, you know what? Everybody's designed around that. What if we just solve that problem and fix that problem uh, in you know the extractor to pressure plunger assembly and make this a, a usable option? And so we're excited about it. I mean, the fact that you know we have like even here in the show like lots several different optics that are right. all there, no plates. That's pretty cool. So and whatever um, you buy, use. Nobody has the original place anyway. Uh, exactly. <laughs> yeah, they're gone. Yeah. They are gone. So the only thing you'll see, like when when we um, there's a little there's like a little spacer, you know, because mm -hmm. obviously they have different lengths. Right. So there's a little spacer. There'll be th like three spacers that'll come with it. So depending, and they're, it's kind of cool. It's designed that as you tighten down the screws, it locks it into place. That spacer and stuff. So pretty cool stuff. We're excited about it. Um, the response has been unbelievable. Like people, we're, we've picked up a ton of law enforcement contracts in this past year. Um, we be in agencies, individuals, and stuff. We're excited about that. SWAT teams, and you name it. Um, we're even getting invited in to go do some military testing coming up. Awesome. So we're excited. Like it's really fun to be a part of this small, you know, a small and growing company. I mean. In we grew um, personnel wise and team wise, or you know, we grew like three hundred percent as a company last oh, wow. year um both in in the sales and in the size of uh, who we have i mean we've it's been constant race to right. kind of keep up so it's exciting we're we're moving to a newer bigger location coming up because we need more space for machines and so it's, it's an exciting time and so it's fun to be able to be a part of this and um get get what we think is a you know an improved option for the market out so, so what happens if somebody comes out with a new optics platform are they all going to be uniform to where they can direct mount, or how does that work? Uh, yeah, so like are you asking if a new company right, has a new right. optic. Yeah, right. so we've seen kind of some standardization around like kind of three different footprints, right? Like right. the RMR footprint, the Delta Point Pro footprint, um, and the Vortex Viper footprint. Now there are some like the Vortex Venom, mm -hmm. um, and I think I've heard the Burris Fastfire. Some of you say it's the same footprint, but it's it's the same screw hole pattern, but it's a longer base, so it doesn't fit. So there are going to be some that right. just aren't going to fit, un, you know, unfortunately. But okay, I got we you. are seeing there's kind of like three footprints they, you know, they design around. I don't know, like SIG redesigned their optics to be the Delta Point Pro footprint and stuff. What was it, the SIG Romeo, the Romeo 1? Romeo. Yeah. So we're seeing some things like that. I think Hollow Sun was the smartest to adopt the RMR mm -hmm. pattern and stuff. So, um for now it's going to be you know kind of what what can our limiting factor is like the kind length. of the length there right, right? and so uh, most of them have one of these two screw hole patterns right but sometimes the length goes so now somebody's going to come up with something that's not going to fit you know right. it, it is what it is but we've kind of like what are the what are the big ones out there that people work with I and want to run and um, so that's why we wanted to build it around those kind so of footprints. If, so if a company were to come out with a new platform, or they should go to the RMR would, footprint. They <laughs> probably <laughs> would, right? Since well, I think so. I think they would yeah. go to that, or I mean, the Delta Point Pros. You know, right. with Sig, that's a big change for Sig to you know completely change their own optics to match. That was a big deal. Well, and if I'm not mistaken, Hollow Sun makes the Sig optics too. Well, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. from what I've been from told, what I've been told, yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> Yeah. So were there any design changes that you had to make in functionality to make sure that the direct mount system didn't interfere with the original function of the gun? Yeah, so the big one came so um there's there's a 
it's, I don't know if you can see it on the camera here, but there's a little pin in there. The typically that that uh, the depressor and everything was like, you know, came all the way towards the back right. and had a longer spring and all that. Well, we we started cutting it down and you know hand making the first ones right you start hand making right. them and like seeing if hey does this work in theory and start shortening it shortening it and came up with a pin so that was the only real change we had to make was in there and so um there's a pretty cool just design we're going to have a kind of an armor's manual there's a uh, little pin hole underneath to to get that pin out and stuff so but nothing drastic no to where no the firing pin same firing pins okay. we've been using and um so yeah it's pretty cool stuff Right we made a uh, um, we've we've improved the trigger a little bit and the trigger pull a little bit on the 920s as well. So mm -hmm. um, we're excited about that and um, just smooth it out. We're still gonna we we make sure we you know the drop safeties remain intact. We don't want to push the envelope too much. Like you know guys, some 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 triggers aftermarket or others are like you know short short take up and all that. Well like. A take up in that design is there for a reason right. for the safety functions and stuff so it's like well we don't want to take that out you know you can have right. a shorter reset and stuff which is great but um we want like i said we believe these need to be everyday carry safe and um yeah usually when people go tinkering around with original oh, design man. sometimes stuff comes up wonky yeah <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah we like it to go bang every time <laughs> right. right not bang when it wants to or bang bang when it was only supposed to go bang and yeah did so. i did i hear you say that there was a long slide version coming or yeah so this is actually this is the 918 l so we right. came out with this last fall so um uses the same 918 frame but it was a longer slide on it so kind of the exact opposite of what the 19x is right okay so a full length slide on a on a compact frame Right. Um, so you obviously you know this is the dimension we're concerned about when you're concealed carrying right. this dimension doesn't matter so you still have the concealability of a 19 mm -hmm. size gun but you got a longer sight radius and all that of the uh, of you know of a full size gun so, so a 17 slide 17 link okay. slide yep and a 19 size frame so the that's nine exa yeah that's exactly what I was looking for yeah when they well, came out with smarter the, it's yeah the slides will really or it yeah. doesn't matter it's the yeah. size of the frame it, yeah so we're this is this gun is Honestly, we're going to get you guys one to go, you know, do right. a test. Oh, yeah. This is, in my opinion, it's the most fun gun we have to shoot. It's so flat. The gun barely right. moves. It's it's a ton of fun. So the 920 version of this will be yeah. out very soon. I, okay. we're, March is when those will start shipping. So it's going to have same idea, but it's going to be the 920 frame right. and the, you know, obviously the 920 right. optics um, features of that. So, and then some other things like that are coming, which I think are cool and get to tell you guys about like, um, we're targeting the NRA show for a release of it, full size gun. Mm -hmm. So um, we should have three other models out this year, but you'll Sweet. see you'll see a full size, so like a 17 sized gun oh, wow. right. coming. Um, that's been a huge request out of the law enforcement community, right? Because a um, couple of couple of departments we have that are actually under contract for stuff that we'll deliver to them in the summer is the full size and the you know compact right. size so we needed both of those um which so that's cool we're excited it's gonna you know the same ideas of the the interchangeable back straps and all the ergonomics of the uh of the 918 and the 920 are going to be in the full size right. version of that so we're how excited a, how about a carbine man <laughs> um since glock won't do it yeah we can we, talk you to do like it. a nine mil carbine yeah. like a pcc stuff mm -hmm. Personally, that's what this guy wants. I really want that. I, I would I, you, man. I love them. I think they're a ton of fun. Right. Um, you know, that that running off of a the Glock style mags is that's, a, is oh, yeah. it's, you know, I think it's such every a good Glock fan has yep. been. And yeah, I'm a Glock fan. Yeah. Boy, and Joe, Joe, and I like Glock. we're all yeah. fans of Glock, and we yeah. want a carbine. Yeah. yeah. No, I I agree. Um, I think I. Th I, well, I can tell you that is some things we have been working on. We've been right. working on some different, you know, future product stuff like um, even kind of the whole idea of the name of the company systems, a shadow systems, right? right. Like it's we don't just want to be a one trick pony. Right. However, we also don't want to just create something like in being the, you know, oh, look at us. We have we have one of those, too. You know, like right. there's got to be a, a real uh, intense design. And, you know, we want to bring something better to the market if we're going to enter that market. So if we're going to so, get into that 9 mil PCC or whatever. So if you're in research and development at Shadow Systems, this is the time, guys. Yeah. Let's do I, it. I hear you. <laughs>
It's oh, official because we did it on the podcast, <coughs> exactly. so it has to happen now. It has to happen. We oh, should just yeah. say, hey, by this date, <laughs> exactly. it'll be out, and then... By SHOT Show 21. Yeah, there we go. See a, yeah, if it's a, not there, we failed. Yeah. <laughs> it seems like the company is pretty yeah. nimble, so they can get right. them out quick. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah that's, next month, right? Yeah, yeah, next month. Yeah. <laughs> See, Byron already has them on order. <laughs> that's the cool thing about, you know, and, and we've had several local manufacturers here on the show, mm-hmm. and with each of them... Because they aren't international, you know, giants or whatever yeah. the case may be, they're not tied down to, you know, stockholders or whatever the case right. may be. Yeah. You know, and th- that's what we appreciate. You know, we said, I said it the first time uh, with one of the local manufacturers, you guys are like the, uh, the John Brownings of today's hmm. world. <laughs> you know, and you take that message back to, to the people that own the company yep. and say, you know, that's what, th- that's what the gun public wants. Yeah. They want direct feedback to turn into a product. Yep. You know, Glock, you know, God bless them, great company. Dude, they came out with a 22 single stack <laughs> and a Glock 19 package. We'll never get a, we'll never get anybody from Glock on this show because it's like the second time I've done it. But <laughs> that's okay. You know, you gotta step outside the boundaries. You know, we're, we're about our, yeah. our fans. We're that's about okay, we can't even get anybody from Glock in the shop. So <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, you know. We're well, that's, <clears throat> you know, that's a big, I mean, we do. We take that very seriously, like because we even try to take that into our whole like customer service mindset, right? Right. Because um, we've all, as consumers, gone through the pain of calling firearms manufacturers for an issue, and it's painful. It's it painful is. as a as a retailer. It's painful as a consumer. And so, like we we have tried to make sure from the get go, like customer service. I mean, it makes and breaks a company, and we want to have the best customer service out there. I mean. Uh, Richie, who's like our our primary technical guy and primary customer service guy, I, I was giving him a hard time because like literally Christmas Day, he's like replying to customers and stuff, which like is unbelievable. Like, right? Because you know a lot of guys shut down that whole week and stuff, but Christmas Day he's sending stuff out, and I was just like that's I've, like I've dealt with Richie. Yeah, yeah. Richie's awesome. Yeah. Like, and so th- we want that to be that's a, that is something we are working hard to scale, right? Like as the company's growing. Richie goes from doing 17 different things to like, hey, you're, you're going to focus on customers and stuff because he's really good and he, he's growing a team with him. And so we want to make sure that stays with us. And so, because right. we get a lot of feedback and like, like that's, well, that's a really great idea. That's mm-hmm. the concept for our show anyway. Right. We wanted to be able to link the manufacturer with the retailers, yeah. with the consumers yeah. and have an honest you know, communication platform to yeah. be able to say, hey, this is what we're looking for. This, I'm yeah. a consumer. This, I'm, yeah. you know, that's what I'm looking for in a gun. Yep. I wanted a Glock with better ergonomics that didn't cost me, you know, an arm and a leg. Right. And, yep. you know, Shadow Systems, you know what, I've been really impressed with them because <laughs> we, we, like, we've toured, when we toured Shot, like you said, there yeah. are other companies doing the same thing. Yeah. And, you know, I hate to look at just price point because yeah. it's not all about price right. point. It's about value. Yeah. And am I getting what Shadow Systems is offering at this price point? Am I getting anything more at a third or twice as much right. from this other company? Right. And I'm not. Yeah. You know, it's the same concept. It's I don't know about the performance because I haven't tried it, but I can't yeah. imagine for a novice shooter like myself that I could tell the difference. I'm yeah. not going to be able to tell. The, I can tell the difference between a $800 gun and a $500 gun. The right. stock lock. You know, I grew up shooting Glock, and people right. bashed me for years. You know, oh, you're a Glock fanboy. So that's why I shoot well. Yeah. You know? But this made it a better experience. Mm-hmm. I, can be, I can actually become a better shooter yeah. using this gun, yeah. and not because of the extra 300 bucks, just because the things you did to it. Yeah. So. What really impressed me the most was, <clears throat> you know, with the 918s, I mean, we, we, we haven't been able to keep the 918s in stock no. ever since we've had them. Nope. And, and we've gone through quite a bit of them. Yeah. And... It's a hot gun. Yeah. Um, for product, the product value in it. I mean, yeah. like I said earlier, I mean, there's no way you could come close to building that gun for the price. Yeah. Um, they shoot incredibly well. Um, but having the company has already gone and made all these improvements and re-released a new product. Yeah. Within one calendar year, that's that's kind of impressive. Yeah, yeah. it's been a. Uh I remember thinking it was a lot of work getting to the launch of the 918 right. <laughs> and like, oh, we're going to get to this and it's going to be, you know, we're going to be busy. But then it was like, go start, you know, developing yeah. some right. new things and stuff. And um, yeah, because 
there you, you when you sit in the office and you're building stuff and you're designing like you're kind of in that vacuum right and so mm -hmm. it is good outside feedback is a good thing and right. um and we we take that very seriously i mean hence some of the changes you see in the 920 and stuff mm -hmm. so um i mean i would never thought about direct mounting it, the optics i don't out. think anybody has yeah, yeah. we're yeah. we're excited i mean it's kudos to the guy that thought that up yeah right? trevor trevor trevor's our ceo and he's like he's our he he <laughs> the dude is smart he, he really is good at the design ideas and um he geeks out on that he, stuff he wants to get so. he's one of those guys because like the reason i stay away from optics is like whenever i look at a gun that has optics yeah and the package is opened up and i got four plates in there <laughs> i know i'm looking and the, and the sales so guy's always like yeah i know we got the shoes for all don't worry about it yeah <laughs> it's like okay right yep so yep. yeah, he must have gotten to that point where he just screw this. We'll just oh yeah, bam, put <laughs> yeah. it right on. Well, there. it was funny. I remember because he, you know, Trevor. Trevor's a amazing shooter, great shooter. Um, you know, and he's but he's never been an optics guy, and he, you know, he's an iron sight guy, and he's, yep. he's a phenomenal iron sight shooter. And he, I'm, but I keep telling him like, man, we have to just continually push to the red dots, red dots, red dots. You know, every. Mm -hmm. I mean. It's changed. It, it really has. Yeah. I mean, it, mm -hmm. it took me, you know, I came out of law enforcement, and it was like, I'm never going to use, you know, I'd like a red dot on a rifle, but right. not on a pistol. And, you know, it's <clears> just front sight, focus, front sight, front sight, front sight. And and and, <laughs> and when I started working shadow and doing things and growing, like, man, I should probably learn how to shoot a red dot, right? Because mm -hmm. you'd, like, go to an event and do things like, I'll shoot the iron sights. Anybody else can shoot the red yeah. dots. And, right. um, and I actually remember I took my dad shooting uh, in a – shoot hit uh took him shooting with a red dot and my dad's not really a shooter at all and he, he's shooting so much better than me with the red dot because it just yes. it was Side okay I, this makes sense mm -hmm. and i started getting going through it and learning and man it it re learning how to shoot right like right. Mm -hmm. okay i'm not going to focus on the dot i'm not going to focus on the front side i'm going to focus on the target i'm gonna let that and across it and i'm like oh and you know thousands of rounds, and you start practicing. Like, I love it. I mean, I carry a, I carry a nine eighteen with a Holosun five hundred eight T on it. I love it. That's my daily carry. Mm -hmm. I absolutely love that gun, and I love the dot and getting much faster with it. And yeah. um, it, but it is, it is. I I have a hard time you seeing any and, gun. Yeah. You know, or, you know, guns are gonna have. Especially you see like this Hellcat now, which really cool gun really smart to be you know make it with optics compatible and stuff even on these small single stack guns and stuff so I mean, they're putting them on 22s yeah you know every virtually i think i just had an eye exam like uh -huh. a month and a half ago before we went to vegas and i'm gonna have to go to red dot i think i yeah. think it i think it's a smart yeah. move in the fact that it takes intimidation out for yeah. novice shooters yeah yeah absolutely because iron sights i think intimidate novice shooters yeah they yep. do, and I think I think the, the well, red dots yeah. definitely eliminate that. If you're an iron shooter, you're accustomed to adjusting your sights to your loads when right. you're shooting. Oh yeah, and you, if you're not, you know, if you're just somebody who just walked onto the range and trying out guns, that that is intimidating. Mm -hmm. you and know? well, you're how many things are you trying to line up? A front right. sight, maybe if you got dots in the back, back, <laughs> you know, you've got seven things you're trying to line up, right. and you're you're intimidated already. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, get, I I agree. I think with new shooters, it's it's. Yeah. Makes you're so talking to a brand new person who's shooting and oh, you yeah. get used to talking to stuff about windage and elevation <laughs> they're not like, gonna what you know, yeah. it's yeah. Like your windage is off and <laughs> yeah. they're like what it's not windy <laughs> out at all yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're inside <laughs> exactly. yeah. so yeah i mean uh, you know kids grow up playing video games and it's just a natural yeah. transition yeah. to to shoot the way you play your games it's and interesting i like my son when i take him shooting get him you know i'm really he wants to shoot the red. I'm like, no, I want you to learn still the fundamentals of the irons and right. everything. Um, but I actually think, you know, I think a r shooting red dots actually made me a better iron sight shooter too. Yeah. I think it focuses me to have a better sight picture and all that because, you know, that dot, you, you know, if you get things just a little bit off, you, you, know, you maybe that in irons, you might still have a sight picture, but not a cert perfect sight picture. Right. You might take that shot where the red dot, maybe you don't even see the dot or whatever and stuff because it's off right. so it i think it's made me a better iron sight shooter um yeah well, i think direct mount's gonna help a lot i think it's gonna make a ton of, i'll tell you because it is those plates are like yeah. i don't know it's legos or what <laughs> do i do and, and you know you're putting it together yourself now okay i'm no gunsmith right yeah i mean i i, I 
I, I'm familiar with guns, and I just don't know that I trust myself. Right. You know, well, it's in, it can be intimidating, yeah, right? Like they, I, they look uh, fragile. Yeah. You well, know, you got a thin plate very going thin. on, going on an area that's been cut out. That's yep. not. Really, it's not cut out very deep either. Yeah. You right. know. So yeah, there's a lot of factors that go into it. I, I think, I think that's affects. a big deal. We're we're actually going to start doing some inline SKU offerings with optics. Mm-hmm. We get we're getting asked a lot for like. I want to buy it from you guys with the optic already on it and stuff. Um, That's not a bad idea. So we're we're actually you know kind of this setup you see right here. Right. You'll probably see this setup, um, Hollow Sun 507, the new V2 they mm-hmm. have coming out. Um, you're probably going to see this soon as an available offering. We've had a lot of people asking for it. Um, we've even found a lot of the law enforcement contracts we picked up and SWAT teams. They're coming to us like same thing. Like we want it with the RMR already on it and so we're we're building you know putting it together and doing it that way i think it makes a lot of sense for folks i mean um one it, yeah it's not that hard to install it right. but it's done it's ready to go yes. again it's a turnkey solution yeah. for mm-hmm. people it's, like you eliminate it's a pain point we can eliminate for you're, somebody you're sitting in a vacuum with a bunch of engineers putting that stuff <laughs> yeah. on and off all the time yeah right right the typical oh old school gun guy yep that gets a gun and he's switching to optics mm-hmm. He's not digging all that extra oh, yeah. work. Why so, do I yeah. have these and, extra and screws? And Plus, you make the decision for the consumer, too. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. I think, I think every shadow system I've ever sold, I sold it with a Holosun. Yeah. Which is great. We went to their booth. They had, they got some great stuff. They're killing out. it. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. We love those guys. Yeah. I mean, we, we uh, it's fun. We're right next, we're, you know, here in Phoenix for a trade show going on. We're right next to them at the booth, and we, we, we tend to be together. We're at a lot. And, I really, really love what they're doing. I think they're doing some amazing, amazing work. And um, I agree, though. You know, like when you can help make some decisions mm-hmm. for the for the shooter, for the end user, because mm-hmm. um, you know, guns, optics, all it's it's a if, big world. It's out a big there. world. I mean, exactly. Yeah. exactly. <clears throat> My son will come to me. What do you know about this? I'm like, I, buddy, I work in the industry. I don't even know what you're talking about. Right. <laughs> you know, because because he can like geek out on something, and I'm like, man, I get so you know, I get focused on what we're doing or what you know is in my similar space i don't know the latest ak-47 exactly. out there or whatever platform and stuff so right. yeah well chad i know you uh you have other obligations to get to tonight we do appreciate you coming by I, yay thank, thank you, you guys thank this you is sir. awesome so we appreciate you guys' you, support so Absolutely. thank you very much Thanks, so fire it thank you sir thank you Cool. And, uh, Don't be a stranger, man. Come by more I know. Often. Absolutely. Yeah, Just not like in July and August because I might melt, right? <laughs> like I'm not used to that. It's a dry heat, man. Yeah, it's yeah. a dry Yeah, I've heard that lie. Yeah. <laughs> you get mountain breeze. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, guys. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, Chad. All right. We are back want to give a quick thanks to Chad Jewett from Shadow System. It was great talking with him and seeing some of the new stuff they've got coming out this year and uh, some of the new products that they've uh, already introduced. So uh, it was a great conversation. But now it is time for the Minuteman. That's right, folks. We're back doing that thing that we do, keeping everybody abreast of the Second Amendment issues that are making its way across America. You know, like we said, Byron and I talk about uh, offline, Joe and I talk about offline. It's uh, it's amazing that some of the things that we see getting passed or proposed across our country regarding our rights to keep and bear arms, they're, they're happening and they're coming to fruition like we thought they would. It's not anything we want to be right about. Uh, you know, a lot of people said, wow, Johnny, you're, you're like way paranoid, bro. None of this stuff's going to go down. It's no big deal. You know, and that's how it happens. That's how it starts. And you take a look at Virginia. Um, Byron and I talked about it earlier today. Uh, the, some of the laws that they threw up against the wall stuck. And, you know, some of it is just political, you know, uh, show off or, or, uh, or just a, a form of negotiations where they throw up everything they can to see what they can make stick and one of those things was the suppressor law so now in virginia you're not allowed to have a suppressor and along with that came um, magazines magazines are standard capacity if you have a 15 round standard capacity magazine those are no longer allowed i call those limited capacity (laughs) standard capacity is a what they call an extended capacity there you go 
you know, and that's the way it should be, but it's, that's not the way it is. So when we look at these things, we have to ask ourselves, you know, how much longer are we as a gun community going to continue to stand by and sit by on our hands, expecting that, oh, it's okay, we'll fix it in the next election, and then it's the next election. In the meanwhile, the opposition is saying, we just took some ground in this election, we're going to take more ground in the next election, and we can continue to take ground until the Second Amendment is no longer a right anymore in this country. And conservatives are conservatives for a reason. Conservatives are, or people are described to be restrained. Uh, we don't speak out a lot. We don't march. We don't throw temper tantrums and we don't get our way. We tend to hope that logic prevails. Logic is not prevailing. No. And it's not going to prevail. If we, if we depend on nothing other than the opposition to come to their senses, we are chasing a fool's paradise. It is not going to happen. They have an agenda, and until and when we decide that we have our own agenda, which is to defend this country and to defend our natural God-given rights and to defend the Constitution that our forefathers put in place to begin this country with, we are not going to win one single battle. There are too many conservatives afraid to speak out. There are too many conservatives that say, well, you know, if I say something, they're going to say I'm this radical. They're going to say I'm this domestic terrorist. They're going to say this. They're going to say that. Well, I got news for you, folks. The last presidential candidate for the DNC called you deplorable. I got news for you. The San Francisco Board of Directors, Board of Supervisors, called 5 million NRA members domestic terrorists. What else are you afraid of? What else is going to happen? They're already calling you a terrorist. They're already calling you radical. They're already calling all gun owners uh, owners of weapons of murder. What else will it take for gun owners and conservatives to say, look, I need to be active in my local area. I need to take a look what's happening with my regional laws. I need to take a look at who's going into office. You know what? Politicians aren't afraid of bullets. They're not afraid of 22,000 people with guns standing on their front doorsteps because they'll just legislate the right to carry guns on capital grounds and keep that threat at bay. You know what politicians are afraid of the most in the entire world? They're afraid of losing their jobs. They're, lo they're afraid of losing votes. The 22,000 people that showed up on the front lawn in Virginia of the Capitol with their guns, one guy had a Barrett 50 walking around. Politicians aren't afraid of that. They're not. They're not afraid of people armed. They're afraid of losing votes. When they looked out there at 22,000 people, they didn't see 22,000 guns. They didn't see 22,000 armed citizens. They saw 22,000 votes that just went out the back door because they took a stand against the Second Amendment. They're afraid to lose their jobs. If you want to keep your rights, you have to be louder. You have to be prouder. You can't be ashamed to be a gun owner. You have to be able to say, look, I'm a gun owner. I believe in the Second Amendment. I believe in the Constitution. And yeah, I am going to show up to the next town hall meeting. I am going to show up at the next 2A rally. I am going to stick something on my car that says I'm a gun owner. I'm not be afraid that somebody's going to steal a gun out of my car because I got a sticker on it. All these tactics are just shaming gun owners. Because you own a firearm, you are somehow less of a citizen, less of a human being, less of a person because you own a gun. And that is their strategy. You don't have to pick up a firearm and load it with a 30-round magazine and march down the front lawn of your local ca capital to scare your politicians into doing what you want them to do, because you won't do that. When you walk up there with a sign that says the Second Amendment is a God-given right, and you'll vote them out of office, you'll scare the bejesus out of them. That's what they're afraid of. They're afraid of the power of the vote. They're afraid of the people waking, awakening they're afraid of the, 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 the 2A base in this country finally being galvanized by the actions of Virginians. You know, a big shout out to Virginians, a big shout out to every state that is actively fighting anti-gun policies. And you know what, Byron brought it, I said it before, I said it was going to happen here, and it finally has. You know, and Byron, you know, run down some of the stuff that's going down, brother, right here in Arizona. Well, <clears throat> right now we have got six in the legislature all sponsored by de democrats every single one of them is sponsored by democrats not one uh, republican uh, legislator is uh sponsoring the bills 
We have uh, Senate Bill 1624, which is a universal background check bill. We have Senate Bill 1625, which is a uh, assault weapon and magazine capacity bill. We have Senate Bill 1626, which is a red flag bill. And I must say, right now, Ducey has already made some comments where he's saying he supports red flag bills, even being a Republican governor. People start messaging the governor's office online. You can get a direct channel right to the governor's office online and tell them you do not support Senate Bill 1626. Doug Ducey? Order. Mr. Ducey, if you support red flag laws, I will do everything within my power to make sure you're voted out of office. Well, he's he's on his way out. Well. He can, he's on his second term, so he's, he's no longer <laughs> going to be our governor. Well, all right. But if he ever plans on being a state senator or something like yeah. that in the future, we got to make sure that he knows that, that his political future might be harmed by him supporting this bill. My offer stands for everybody that follows him. No confiscation without due process. Uh, Senate Bill 1627, uh, secure storage of weapons. Um, kind of a common sense issue as a responsible gun owner, we should securely store our weapons. But it also included one part of that bill that I did not like, which was um, it's a lot of uh, restrictions on minors with firearms. And one of them being is uh, no minors under the age of uh, no minors at 18, 18 or under can hunt without the supervision of a guardian or adult, which you know I grew up hunting. I was hunting by myself at 15, 16 years old without my father. <clears throat> Granted, my father instilled gun safety and etiquette at a very young age with me, but you know that's part of growing up in this country is being able to go out and hunting with your buddies and stuff like that when you're in high school we used to go after school and go dove hunting or quail hunting or you know it's it's ridiculous um senate bill 1286 uh obviously that uh, the democratic senators and legislators in this state haven't heard that the bump fires were federally ruled out but they decided to write a bill about it last week anyways um, one thing they did include in that bill was any accessory that in increases the rate of fire on a semi-automatic weapon. Very vague statement. Um, That's your finger. It could be an aftermarket trigger. It could be mm -hmm. a binary trigger. It could be a performance spring. I mean, there's a lot of... Connector, a lot of connector, right. I mean, there's a lot of things out there that that this could possibly affect. Um, and then they have HB 2545, um, which is a more of a dealer-based bill. Um, again, a lot of common sense issues, but they slipped in there a couple times the fact that they don't want you to be able to buy more than one weapon every 30 days. Um, they also want the ATF's multiple handgun reporting uh, threshold from five calendar days pushed to 90 calendar days. So that means that a dealer would have to send a report to the ATF every time you buy more than one weapon every three months. Um, not a good deal there. Not a good deal at all. Um, Going to put some uh, pressure on Gunfucius over here, sitting behind the counter. <laughs> uh, we still have to prep the uh, the episode for air, but this coming Saturday, February the 15th, there is a Second Amendment rally at the Arizona State Capitol lawn. There is also a, uh, a Second Amendment town hall on Sunday from 2 to 4 at the Sheridan Crescent on I-17 in Greenway in Phoenix. Um, that one is sponsored by the Second Amendment Foundation. Um, real important that... Uh, that people who are 2A enthusiasts, and even if you're not a 2A enthusiast, you're an enthusiast of your civil rights, um, need to be seen and heard. It's it's uh, extremely important. We we can't let the situation here go to a Virginia status. People are saying, well, you know, it's Arizona. We've got a Republican House. We got a Republican Senate. We got a Republican governor. We have nothing to worry about. 
But that's not to say that two years from now, situation's not different. That's you know, we've got a Republic, uh, we've got a Democratic sheriff in Maricopa County, which is one of the heaviest gun-toting counties in the nation, who is coming out saying that he is in full support of all these bills that have been proposed. Um, he Joe, needs, he Arpaio, needs we replaced. miss you, buddy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I voted for him. Um, but it, it's people have to have to look to the future and and look to what you're handing down to your children and 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 what's coming up, you know, and and letting legislators know that that we're not going to stand for them interfering with our rights. We need to really take a look at these bills that are being proposed and just try to get an understanding of how the heck they're actually supposed to help reduce crime or violence. None of them do. No. None of them do. As, as with most gun control laws or bills or proposals, they are done for political purposes. Gun control is nothing more than political currency. You take a look at every, and, and we talked about it earlier, every single one of these bills is proposed by a Democrat. You take a look at the National Democrat Party. What are they running on? What's Bloomberg running on? What's Elizabeth Warren running on? They have Jack Diddley to run on except for gun control. Are they going to complain about the economy and the crappy job that Trump's doing with the economy? They can't. It's booming. Are they going to complain about unemployment? They can't. It's booming. What else can they do? You have to take a look at this from further than just a, a ground-level perspective. You have to take a look at it from a 30,000-foot perspective and just understand that politics is nothing more than games. They're playing mind games with the American people. The Democratic Party after the Iowa caucus looks like crap. The Iowa caucus showed how incompetent the DNC party is at running their own little election. Um, you take a look at the attempts to depose a sitting president with absolutely zero proof. They had no proof of a crime being committed. The only thing that they tried to, to, to impeach him on was political differences. And they failed at that. Pelosi looked like an idiot. So there you have it. The DNC has absolutely nothing to run on with the exception of gun control. And what is gun control about? It's about emotions. It's about emotional appeal to the people that has nothing to do with logic, which is why I said earlier, if you're, if you're waiting for the Democratic Party and their voters to come around and to, to appeal to logic, you're wasting your time. We have to understand as people, as citizens of each and every county and municipality in this country, that gun control does nothing other than control the guns in the hands of law-abiding citizens. Historically, no criminal has ever been stopped that I've known of in any kind of mass shooting because of a gun law. It is by nature. Criminals don't follow laws. The only people that follow these gun laws are law-abiding citizens. And what do they do? They increase the cost of gun ownership. You talk about one of the laws that's being proposed, the um, secure storage weapons, right? Let's go ahead and just break that down, find out what they're talking about. So in the law, they're saying that you have to safely secure your weapon in your home. How is anybody going to know how you store your guns? The only way they're going to know is to show up to your house and do a spot check. You want to know. Or if your neighbor sees you walking from the range to your home, you put your gun case down because you're taking a phone call and the neighbor doesn't like you, they can red flag you and say, hey, he's not storing his guns correctly. He's got a safe, but here I am, I'm the neighbor, I'm standing in my kitchen and see across the way, he's got his gun sitting on the kitchen counter. How unsafe. Then you have to talk about how you store those guns. If you have 40 guns, you have 10 guns, if you have three guns, what kind of safe do you need? Do you need the state approved safe? Do you need a safe that has at least the capacity of 10 guns over than what you actually own? Can you have a gun that has no place to store but you have to buy a special safe for? How good is your safe? We have to come by and check it. We have to check it for the integrity of the ability to keep it out of the hands of criminals. You have to check the safe so you're going to have to pay a little tax on your safe. You're going to have to pay a registration ticket for your safe. It's the same thing as gun registration. They can turn it to, into that. Again, people said, when I brought this up before, people say, wow, man, you're a little paranoid. They're just telling you to put your guns away. All gun owners are going to sit there and put guns in their safe. That's a normal thing to do. It's no big deal. Well, you know what? That's how it starts. 
nobody is coming to get what you want. Nobody who's trying to rob you is going to tell you, I'm coming in a pretax of robbing you. They're going to tell you, no, it's no big deal. We just want to, whenever you hear a government entity tell you that it's for the, safe, the, 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 the safety of the public, you have to raise questions. How many times have you heard in the past of the government putting out laws for public safety that turned into a fiasco? And that was never the agenda to start with. So, you know, little harmless things that we let go by because we say we're good people, we, we, we're responsible gun owners, we store our guns this way and everybody should do it. That's not the case. You know, the bottom line is this is America. You store your gun however you want to store your gun. You deal with the consequences. We have laws against unsafe gun storage. If somebody walks in your home, steals a gun, and shoots somebody with it, you could be liable depending on what you did with your gun. There are already laws out there for red flags. If you're exhibiting crazy behavior to the point where people are concerned about you, there are already laws that have police do checks, uh, to come by and do a safety check. And if they feel that you shouldn't have a weapon, they'll take the weapon away. There are already those laws in place. These are nothing new. This is putting in more restrictive laws. This is allowing a slippery slope to happen. Every time you compromise and you allow the government to take away your liberties and your, and your civil rights, you're giving away what you shouldn't be giving away in the first place because inalienable rights cannot be negotiated. They cannot be legal, uh, legislated away. You're just giving them the power to do it. Don't do it. You know, it, it's everybody already knows what to do with a gun. It's like doing a YouTube video and people say safety check your guns. It's ludicrous. It's gotten to a point where you can't do a video without doing all kinds. Of, you have to jump through all hoops and, and all kinds of things like a dog and pony show to, to make sure your video doesn't get taken off YouTube. We're all responsible gun owners. Everybody that I know of is a responsible gun owner. The people that are breaking the law, the people that are irresponsible with guns are not going to get any more legal. They're not going to abide the, by the law anymore or they're not going to be any more responsible because you put a law out. It just gives it gives the government a scapegoat <clears throat> if something does happen. Absolutely. And, and that's all that law is for. Yeah. You take a look at drunk driving. Do people get more sober and stop driving because of drunk driving laws? They're still leading the nation in DUIs, it seems. Last time I checked, people drink. And they're going to get in the cars. And responsible, responsible people are going to take an Uber. And irresponsible people, alcoholics or whatever the case may be, are going to get in the car and drive. Laws, and people say this all the time. So you're saying that criminals don't follow laws. Why do we even have laws? What's the point? The point is you have to understand what a law does. A law defines what the crime is and defines what the punishment for the crime after you're found guilty. A law doesn't deter people from doing things. There's 55 uh, mile per hour limit signs all over the place. People continually break the law. It doesn't deter somebody from committing a crime if they want to commit a crime. Joe, you got something to say about that, buddy? Man, pretty much said everything. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think it comes down to and and you know people always say, oh, you know, you're 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 comparing apples and oranges. But it, what it comes down to eventually is is a disarmed base of citizens is powerless. And if you look through history, anybody who's taken over a country. Has always disarmed the population first. The very first thing they do. Yes. If if the government wasn't afraid of the citizens, they wouldn't be making a push to uh, to disarm the population. And and I I truly do believe that. I'm 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 not trying to be a conspiracy theorist or anything like that. <clears throat> if they were good at doing their job, they wouldn't have to disarm the population. And, you know, I go right back to disarming a population never does any good. The, the, the point of emphasis for the government is we will make our country safer. We will make your town and cities safer. We'll protect you by taking guns away. And where does that work? Does it work in Chicago? No. Does it work in California? Does it work in Baltimore, Maryland? Does it work in New Orleans? Does it work in St. Louis? What I'm naming off are some of the most violent areas of the country, and they're all run by Democrats. And that's why you have to understand, it's not about public safety. 
It's not about mass, preventing mass shootings. It's not about making sure people won't commit suicide. We hear suicide all the time. Listen, you can ban every gun in the world today. Take them out of circulation. People will still kill themselves. Yep. You know, they'll, just, still find them, and they'll still find a way to kill others. Yeah, and you know, I'm not making light of suicide victims. I'm not making light of mental illness. People get to a point where they feel their life is over with and, and, and they're motivated by a source that we can't fathom. They're motivated by a drive that we can't fathom. And taking a tool away, one tool away from them, is not going to stop them from doing what that, you know, what that the mentality has put them into, that tailspin that they're in. You know? It's just, you want to help suicides? Do something other than blame it on guns. Because as you're blaming it on guns, people are killing themselves right now. Stop giving every, every person who has an ill feeling Prozac or, or psychotic okay. meds. We could go, there's, there's probably 10 shows there and by itself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I mean, yeah. <clears throat> that's, yeah. So, you know, at the end of the day, you know, what Byer and I were talking about earlier, uh, you know, we as American citizens, you know, I take great pride in being American. I take great pride in being Arizonan. And, uh, you know, it didn't even shock me when I saw this stuff coming out. And when stuff like this comes out, as one poster put on a, a blog that I read today, when laws like this come out, you have to curb stomp them right in the beginning. If you don't, they're going to continue to grow. Because those people won't stop. They won't stop proposing these laws. Red flag laws were proposed last year. They got struck down. Ducey finally got off his you know, high horse and said, okay, we'll, we'll table it. It took it off the last session, but it's going to come back, and it's going to still come back. Even if none of these proposals pass, which I don't think they will, because as Byron said, we have pretty... You know, we have uh, both houses and the governor, uh, both chambers and the governor uh, being Republicans. I don't think they'll pass. But again, if you really want to stop your government from infringing upon your rights, you have to put the fear of God into them. And, it, and that's not by loading up your gun and marching. That's by voting them out of office if they do the wrong thing. They're deathly afraid of being unemployed. Complacency cures nothing. Exactly. You know, we're not we're not trying to tell you to be political activists, but you know, you, you got to do what you got to do. And, and in, unless you do want to load your gun up and have to fight a battle you don't want to fight, you're better off loading up your pen and loading up your 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 PC and start emailing your reps, start emailing your governor. Just tell them, look, my name is blah, blah, blah. I live in this district. I vote for you last time, and I won't vote for you this time if you continue to do all these shenanigans with gun laws. And I will tell everybody I know on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter, everybody I walk in the mall, everybody I shoot with, every gun organization I belong to, we will work our butts off to get you out of office. That's how you control politicians. They're cowards. They're afraid to lose their jobs. Make them continue to afraid, be afraid to lose their jobs, and don't be ashamed to be a gun owner. Don't be ashamed to be a supporter of the Constitution. Dang it, don't be ashamed to be American. Absolutely. Hell yeah. All right, well, that's going to do it for tonight's show. Uh, next episode, episode eight, we have our friend Frank DeSelma coming back from POF. Hell yeah. I'm excited about that. Yeah. <laughs> always a, uh, <clears throat> a good uh, visit with Frank. He's got some new products that POF is coming out with this year. Some really exciting stuff we're really interested in seeing and uh, can't wait to do that one. POF has great guns. <laughs> so, for myself, Johnny, and Joe, this is uh, Episode 7 signing off. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time, guys. <laughs>